Carolina is off to their best start since 2018-19 when they earned a number one seed in the NCAA tournament. And a massive matchup in a rivalry game awaits tomorrow with NC State. But before we get there, let's pump the brakes and take stock of the path that the Tar Heels are on. You are Locked On Tar Heels, your daily podcast on the UNC Tar Heels. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, what's up? Welcome into the Locked On Tar Heels podcast, the only daily North Carolina show out there. It's Tuesday, January 9th, 2024. I'm your host, Isaac Shade, and I want to thank you, in particular, you everydayers, for making Locked On Tar Heels your first listener watch to get your team every day. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Hey, some of you, you're brand new to the show. Welcome. We're so glad you're here. If you'd like to be a bigger part of this community, come join the Locked on Tar Heels Discord chat. Speaking of that NC State game tomorrow night, it's going to be lively and going. We've got a live game thread that we have each game. You're not going to want to miss out. The link is in the show notes. Come join us. All right, coming up today, the new polls are out. Carolina is moving up. I saw some Harrison Ingram slander in the past couple days, and I will not stand for that. We've got to redirect that. And oh, by the way, FanDuel has changed their ACC regular season odds. We're going to talk about all of that. But it's Tuesday, and that means it's time for Trivia Tuesday. You ready for this? You might have seen that Carolina is the only ACC school to have both men and women currently undefeated at at least 3-0. and Well, you know me, I'm a researcher, so I went and did more research. In fact, the Tar Heels are the only Power 6 school to have both men's and women's teams at at least 3-0, and and that leads to today's Trivia Tuesday question. When was the last time that both the Carolina men and women started at least 3-0 and in ACC play? We'll have the answer for that right at the end of the show. Stick around. Can't wait to answer that one for you. Can't wait to see your guesses as well. All right, let's dive right into this. I I don't know about you. I am very, very excited for this matchup at NC State tomorrow night. For me, the rivalry with the Wolfpack has been growing the past year or two, and I'm here for it, right? Like, I know that we all look at Carolina Duke as the best rivalry in sports, but historically, the Tar Heels and Wolfpack, that's the rivalry. And as Duke has gone more down this like complete one and done train, I just, I don't loathe them as much because they don't stick around with NC state. It feels like the, the sheer sports hatred that you love is there. And I think it's starting because of how just nasty things have gotten on the football field the last couple of years. And I think that's spilling over into the basketball rivalry. So It's just making me all the more excited for this game. Anybody with me out there? Are you like, yeah, the Carolina State rivalry is getting back to the glory days and I'm here for it and I'm guessing you are too. But again, before we get to unpacking that, which we'll do fully on tomorrow's show, Coach Pat Kilby and I will get you ready for that game. I want to soak in where things are at because it's very easy in the midst of a season to just start rolling And then it's gone before you realize it. So I want to make sure that we're taking stock of what the Tar Heels are doing right now because it is nice to be back to being Tar Heels and doing what they should do. It's been a a rough last four regular seasons. The final two years of Coach Williams' era, unfortunately, just weren't up to Carolina standards. These first two years of the Coach Davis era outside of the close to his first year, just wasn't what you expect out of a Carolina team. And while this year has not been perfect, obviously there's the loss in overtime to Villanova, but you can live with it. There's the loss to UConn and Kentucky, both of which is like, all right, fine. It's not been perfect, but boy, has it been much more what we expect. Through 14 games, as you well know, Carolina is 11-3 and and 3-0. 
And I'm all the more appreciative of it because of what happened the last four years. It's very easy for us as Tar Heels to get spoiled by what Carolina does year in and year out. Let me remind you of the last four years. Last year, through these same 14 games, again, remember right now, Carolina 11-3, and 3-0 and in ACC play. Last year, same point, 9-5, and 1-2 and in ACC play, missed the tournament. The year before that, 10 and four overall, two and one in ACC play. We know that magical run to the NCAA championship game. 2020 21, Coach Williams last year, Carolina's first 14 games, nine and five and four and three in ACC play. We know that they lost in the first round of the tournament to Wisconsin. The 1920 season, Carolina's first 14 games, eight and six, one and two in ACC play. There was no tournament due to COVID, but Carolina wasn't going to make it. So you look at this year and it's like, boy, this is great. I just want to remind us what we're coming out of. But I also want to remind us even a little further back of the trajectory that we could be on right now. Because how about the four years before the past four years? 1819, Carolina started out 11-3 and overall, 1-0 and in ACC play. They earned a one seed in the NCAA tournament. The year before that, 17-18, 12-2 in their first 14, 1-0 in the ACC, earned a two-seed in the tournament. 16-17, the national championship season, they were 12-2 at this point, hadn't played an ACC game yet, number one seed in the tournament. The 15-16 season, not I don't mean number one overall, I just mean they were a one seed. 15-16 season, through 14 games, 12-2, 1-0 in ACC play, a one seed. That is the trajectory the Tar Heels are on right now, trending towards a top two seed in the tournament and playing very, very good basketball for a long time in March and hopefully into the very beginning of April. Now, there are no guarantees, but that is the trajectory the Tar Heels are on. We do not know how the final 17 games will play out. They could lose to State tomorrow night and go 0-17. That's not going to happen, but you know what I mean? Like That is what sports is. This could go horribly wrong. But with where Carolina's at and the work they have done, they're in great shape. The thing is, you cannot get complacent now. The Tar Heels have to be hungry game in and game out. Not just NC State because it's a rivalry game. When Syracuse comes to town Saturday, got to be dialed in and on and on and on. So things are looking great. And I just want to remind us all to enjoy the ride that we're on. This is a veteran team. This is an experienced team. I've said it multiple times this season, but they are the fourth most experienced team in Division I. That will pay dividends all season long. But it's not just about experience. This is a talented team. This is also a complementary team. It's one thing to just be talented but have a bunch of point guards. This is a team where the positions and the skill sets match well. We also need to enjoy it because it's a guarantee that this is the last season of Armando Baycott. It is perhaps the last season of R.J. Davis, and boy, what a special season it is already. It's also guaranteed that this is the only season we'll get with Cormac Ryan and Paxson Wojcik. I want to enjoy this ride because this team is fun. They love to get to play together. All that chemistry we heard about preseason, oh boy, do you see that played out. Every time they step foot on the court, it's very real and it's very evident. It's so clear when that chemistry isn't there and this team has it. That is another thing that will sustain a group of young men together through the ups and downs of a college basketball season. Because when you love playing for one another, which they clearly do, it just helps. It helps sustain it all. So, All that to say, when the Tar Heels go to PNC Arena tomorrow night, where they've uncharacteristically lost two of their last three after winning seven straight at PNC before that, let's live it up. Let's enjoy it. Go in and take care of business. But in so doing, appreciate every R.J. Davis awesome three. Revel in every Armando Baycott rebound. Every befuddled look from Kevin Keats, let's just live it up and drink it in. And when the Tar Heels leave that building victorious, we're going to enjoy every moment of that. Well, uh, folks, the Tar Heels have climbed to their highest spot in the AP rankings this season. And here's why I want to talk about it. It is earned. It is not given. I'm going to explain. 
Right after I tell you that this episode of Locked on Tar Heels is brought to you by Jace Medical. I know that we come to a sports to escape from some of the crazy realities of life, but I'd like to talk for just a minute about preparing for when real life hits. According to the FDA, pharmacies are running out of antibiotics like amoxicillin right in the middle of the worst flu season in over a decade. I can't imagine a more helpless feeling than if someone I loved sick while needing um, life-saving medications that they couldn't get because of a supply chain issue. But thankfully, there's Jace Medical, and they have this thing called the Jace Case, which is a pack of five different antibiotics to treat a long list of bacterial illnesses, things like UTIs, respiratory infections, and others. It could happen to any of us. So visit jacemedical.com and complete your physician encounter. It will be reviewed by a board-certified physician, and your medications will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the regular cost. It's never been more important to be prepared than today. Go to jacemedical.com and use offer code LOCKEDON to get $20 off your order. That's Jace Medical. The Tar Heels are up to seventh in the AP poll. It is the highest they've been this season. It refreshes every Monday, and you expect it after coming off a week of two road wins, including overranked Clemson, who kind of, in the eyes of a lot of people, had been the ACC favorite, that the Tar Heels are sitting pretty. Let me give you the top 10 right now. Oh, and by the way, the women are back into the AP poll coming in at number 20th and also were named ESPN's team of the week last week for their two wins over ranked opponents. Again, they're going to have to do it more this week as they go on the road to also ranked FSU. Here's the men's top 10. Purdue 1, Houston 2, Kansas 3, UConn 4, Tennessee 5, Kentucky 6, Carolina 7th, Arizona 8, Oklahoma 9, Illinois 10. Why do I read that list off to you? Well, as I read it, you recognize a lot of names on that list as opponents already played this season. The Tar Heels have played numbers four, five, six, and nine, and are themselves the Tar Heels number seven. That means the combination of Carolina and their opponents thus far this season make up half of the top AP top 10 right now. Carolina is doing great things. Now, you know, they haven't won all those games. They're two and two against those four opponents. But my goodness, I will take two and two against the top 10. I Yes, I would rather be four and oh or three and one. But I'll take two and two over one and three or oh and four big time. And so as you would imagine, because of that, Carolina's strength of schedule is wild. The Tar Heels right now are ninth at Ken Palm in strength of schedule. And I'm not just talking non-con strength of schedule. I'm talking overall strength of schedule. And the majority of the top 10 in strength of schedule is made up of teams that are like 200 or worse at Ken Palm because they got all these bye games. So they're playing a ton of really difficult teams early in the season. The only two major conference teams that are ahead of Carolina right now in strength of schedule are Purdue and Arizona because Arizona just went and scheduled anyone they could find. And then Purdue was in Maui where they just had to play uh, a, a ridiculous slate. So for the Tar Heels, they've played a bunch of really good teams. Their strength of schedule is strong and they've performed well in those games. All that to say this number seven ranking is earned. Let's talk more about it. Carolina is eighth in the locked on top 25. We we vote on that uh, each week as well. Um, at, in ESPN's power rankings for this week, the Tar Heels are seventh. And so as you start to look at that and, and getting all these top 10 accolades, let's remember this. After last year's downfall, no one was going to come quick to the Tar Heels defense. For anyone that's voting in any poll, Carolina was going to have to convince all of them that they had turned over a new leaf, that this year was not last year. They were going to have to stack win on win on win because voters are understandably slow to trust the Tar Heels. But Carolina, bit by bit, is earning that trust back. This ranking is not based on name value. This ranking is not some Nepo ranking. You know, you talk about like Nepo babies that get jobs just because mommy or daddy has a job. 
Carolina is getting this job based on merit. They have earned what they've been, you know, I, I, I am going to say given here, but you know what I mean? Like they earned the votes they've gotten. I'll put it that way. They, they are doing it great. And it's not just the voters. It's the computer rankings too, right? Where um, sometimes you get like Miami, for example, is a team that voters have liked more strongly than the computer numbers. Not so with the Tar Heels. They have earned this ranking. Another way to show it, how about this? We're going to talk uh, FanDuel in our next ad read. But all season long, one, one of the things when I do our FanDuel read, a lot of times I'll give you the uh, the odds for winning the ACC regular season championship because FanDuel lists those odds for every conference. Literally all season, and I know it because I see it every week when I do these reads, Duke has been the favorite. Carolina has been closing the gap, but guess what? Let me read you the odds now as they were on Monday. It gives the top six teams. Let me go in reverse order to keep the suspense. Number six in the best odds to win the ACC. NC State plus 2,000. Five, Clemson plus 1,400. Miami, four, plus 1,000. Wake Forest, third, plus 700. Number two, no longer the Tar Heels. It's now Duke sitting at plus 185 and the odds on favorite at FanDuel to now win the ACC regular season is the Tar Heels at plus 140. And yes, they take into account everything like, you know, we've talked about scheduling and how Dukes is more favorable. This has taken all of that into account. And Tar Heels are the favorite. This is not given, it is earned. So again, as we talked about at the beginning of the show, Let's embrace this and eat it up. Speaking of accolades, here's a couple other bits of good news. Armando Baycott was named the ACC Player of the Week last week, and it wasn't just that. It wasn't just the conference level. Armando was also named the Naismith National Player of the Week last week. So, you know, we, we've talked about it a couple of times following the Clemson game, but man, that was the Armando Baycott we need game in and game out. And that is getting recognized. So for all the Armando Baycott naysayers out there, you're going to have to go back into hiding because that's done. Now, he's got to keep stacking this, right? Like it's next game, NC State, got to do it. Syracuse, Saturday, got to do it again, right? Keep doing that. Speaking of accolades, quick switch to the football field really quick before we move on. It was announced uh, North Carolina released on Monday that Julius Peppers is going to be inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame. So big congrats to Pep. Man, great stuff there and expected. And speaking of earned, yeah, this man earned it. Now, I just mentioned some Armando Baycott haters. I've also, I don't know why. But I've received some Harrison Ingram, like, is he is he falling off kind of conversation? And I am not here for any of that news. I'd like to talk about it. I'd like to frankly stand up for our guy because I'm appalled at any kind of Harrison Ingram hate. And we'll do that in just a second, right after I tell you that this episode of Locked on Tar Heels is brought to you by FanDuel. The NFL regular season just wrapped. Playoffs are starting this weekend, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get 150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's 150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is really easy to use, and they have a bunch of different ways to bet. Same game parlays. There's a new explore tab to help you find bets. Or as we just mentioned a second ago, the ACC odds have recently updated and there's a new favorite. It's the Tar Heels at plus 140, followed by Duke at plus 185. And then frankly, nobody else is close after that. So to get in on that action, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Harrison Ingram, what a revelation this dude has been for the Tar Heels this year. He adds so many different things in so many various ways, both on and off the court, quite frankly, to help Carolina uh, get to where they are, as we've been talking about, sitting at 11-3 and and 3-0 and in ACC play. He started the season off with 12 straight double-digit scoring games, but has been at 7-9 and nine the last two. And because of that, 
I've had a couple people communicate in a couple various ways. Like Harrison Ingram's fallen off. What what's happening? He's not doing the things he was doing. First off, double digit scoring is just some arbitrary breaking point that we ascribe to help us make sense of having a good game or not. But the difference in scoring nine points or 10 points is like, come on, right? So can we not use that to suggest that Harrison is falling off because he fell one point or three points shy of that? Sure, he will be, Harrison will be the first person to tell you that he cannot combine to go five of 24 from the field as he has in the past two games. Absolutely, he's got to shoot better. But scoring is not the only way to impact a basketball game in in winning ways. Because here's the truth of the matter. You're not going to shoot well every game, game in and game out. And sometimes you might have two of them in a row. That's just the nature of this sport. But Harrison Ingram, rather than getting upset about it, he's continued to plug away. He's been in. He's been active. When he's on the bench, he's been active and supportive. But oh, by the way, those five shots that he has made, a couple of them have been critically important to Carolina beating Pitt and Clemson. Uh, Like, for example, we talked about the three-pointer that he made against Clemson that came immediately the possession after Clemson made their only three of the game, just negating any momentum they might be able to dredge up right there. But what Harrison does is affect the game in a multitude of other ways, making him so critically valuable as a stat stuffer. In those two combined games where he shot five of 24, he has 19 total rebounds. That's an average of nine and a half, six of which are offensive. He has six assists, three turnovers. Okay, sure, but that's still a two to one assist to turnover ratio. He's got two blocks and a steal. So he's doing it, filling it up in other ways. And that's not even to mention everything he does that doesn't show up in a box score, which he does critically well. And as kind of a small ball four, he's got a lot he's got to put up with and deal with. Somebody like Ian Shufflin from Clemson. We'll talk a little bit more about that here in just a second. And in addition to what Harrison does on the court, it's his attitude both on and off that is so important. That Harrison's Ingram is infectious. If you're around it, it's infectious. It comes through the TV. It comes through when he, you know, grabs a teammate with his arm around his shoulder and just has a big smile. Like those things matter. This dude loves life and basketball and his team. And I'm here to tell you how important that is is if you've ever played an organized sport, you know the difference in somebody that's always down and we can't do it and we can't win and somebody that's like, hey, look, we're good. Let's just keep doing what we know how to do. That's what Harrison Ingram is. That affects winning just as much as going 10 of 10 from the free throw line or whatever. But we've also learned a lot recently about Harrison Ingram's character. Here's a great example of it. I mentioned Ian Shufflin. He had a great game for NC State. I thought he was their best player on Saturday. But one of the things that he did so well was just his activity, was was tipping out balls, getting offensive rebounds, particularly right out of halftime at the beginning of the second half. And Harrison Ingram was kind of on the wrong side of that, so he got pulled in favor of Jalen Withers. Withers came in, gave some good minutes, good energy, and activity. And oftentimes in those moments, you see a player go to the bench for getting pulled and, you know, pull their jersey up over, sit with their head in their hands and like, oh, no, you know, one of those kind of moments. That was not what Harrison Ingram was doing. Harrison Ingram, even when being pulled for, you know, whatever specifics it was that Coach Davis needed, he was in, he was engaged, cheering on his team. There there was no bemoaning his lot in life. He was all, he is all about the team and good grief. That matters in such a big way. That is what happens that even when you're going five of 24, you are helping your team win. So Ingram comes back in, as I noted on Twitter on Monday, ends up he and Seth Trimble are the only two Tar Heels to play the entirety of the final 14 minutes of that game. Because instead of sitting around feeling sorry for himself, 
He cheered on his team, and then when he got back in, he did work. I love Harrison Ingram. I'm glad he's part of this team. He may never score double-digit points again this season, or he might do it every game the rest of the season. It doesn't matter. He's going to affect winning every game. All right, we got to answer our Tuesday trivia question. Here it is again. The UNC men and women are both 3-0 and right now in ACC play. My question to you is when was the last season that both these teams started at least 3-0 and in the ACC? If you haven't had a chance, now's the time to pause it and think about it. Write down your answer, and I'll give it to you. There's obviously been a couple different seasons when one of them did that, but the other didn't. But the last time both of them did it, 2007-8 season. As for the men, it's funny. They actually lost their next game. They started 3-0 and then lost to Maryland. Funny thing is, that was one of just two regular season losses and three losses all season long. The Tar Heels that year finished the regular season 29-2, 14-2 in ACC play, won the ACC tournament, and unfortunately, as we know, got blitzed by Kansas in the Final Four. But it's okay because we know what happened the next year. Whew. As for the women that year, they had maybe an even more impressive year than the men did. They actually went undefeated in ACC play, 14-0. and Same thing, just two losses in the regular season. They were 27-2, and and as I said, 14-0 and in conference play. Also won the ACC tournament. Then they unfortunately lost in the Elite Eight, just one round before the men, to LSU. So neither team could finish that season with a national championship, but great runs for both of them. Would love to see that kind of success again this season. All right, folks, that's it for today's episode. It's been great to be together. Can't wait for tomorrow when I'm going to be joined by Coach Pat Kilby. We'll get you totally ready for the NC State game. I know it's going to be riled up. I know that tensions are going to be high because it is a big time environment. And oh man, I can't wait. It's going to be great. If you want to be part of the, the game day experience with us, come join the Locked on Tar Heels Discord. Again, the link for that is in the show notes. You can email us, LockedOnTarHeels at gmail.com. Maybe you got a listener question, a video question. You can submit that on there. Don't forget to subscribe on audio and video. Please rate and review the show. Five stars. Talk about why you love it. If you're watching on YouTube, smash that like button so we know that you were here. All right, y'all, it's always a great day to be a Tar Heel. I can't wait to talk with you tomorrow, but until then, peace.